Hi, and welcome to the webinar. Today I'll be teaching you 10 phrasal verbs with multiple meanings. Now, to refresh your memory, a phrasal verb is a two or three word verb with a main verb and a preposition, like the example in the picture take off. Now, phrasal verbs are very similar to each other. For example, we have take off, take out, take on, take over, take up, and all of these are different. And also, one phrasal verb can have multiple meanings. Take off can refer to an airplane going up into the air. Take off can mean to remove something. For example, take off your jacket or take off your shoes. And we have three more meanings. Take off can mean increase fast in success and popularity. For example, if a new video game takes off, it means that a lot of people start using and playing the video game. Take off is also an informal way to say leave. For example, you can tell your friends, I've got to take off. I'll see you guys later. That means I have to leave. And finally, we also use take off when you stop working or studying for a period of time. For example, I took two weeks off from work. So in today's lesson, I'm going to teach you 10 of these phrasal verbs, which have two, three, or even more meanings. So here's how today's class will work. I will show you an example sentence. You'll try to guess what the phrasal verb means in context, and you can type your answer in the box, or you can just think about it to yourself, and then I will explain and give some more examples. Now, why do I ask you to guess what the phrasal verb means? Because I think this is a good way for you to practice figuring out new English expressions from their context. So even if you get the answer wrong, it's okay. This is good practice for you. All right? And if you want to learn 500 phrasal verbs, then definitely check out the Phrasal Verbs in Conversation course, which uses a similar method. In that course, you also have the chance to learn the phrasal verbs in context through conversations. So there's a button under this webinar for the phrasal verbs in conversation course, and if you're interested, check it out. Okay, let's get started. Phrasal verb number one, pass out. The teacher passed out the tests to the students. What do you think passed out means in this context? Right, this is an easy one. Pass out means to give or distribute. And we can talk about a teacher passing out tests or worksheets in the classroom or passing out promotional material in public, like passing out flyers, passing out coupons, or sometimes free samples. Like if you have a new cafe, sometimes they pass out free samples of food on the street to help attract customers. Now, here's another example sentence. It was so hot in the classroom that I felt like I was going to pass out. Now, what does pass out mean in this context? Okay, some people are saying fall asleep or feel sick. Pass out in this context means to faint, to lose consciousness. People can pass out from shock when something scares them from fear. People can pass out if they're very nervous. Or people can pass out from medical problems like low blood pressure. Now, if you get hit on the head with an impact, then we usually say you get knocked out instead of pass out, okay? Pass out usually doesn't involve an impact. So those are two different meanings for the phrasal verb pass out. Let's go to number two, bring up. Her parents died when she was very young, so her grandparents brought her up. What do you think brought her up means? Good, a few people are getting it. Bring up means to raise, care for, and educate a child. 
to teach a child good behavior. Um, and we're not talking about formal education here. We're talking about parents teaching children good behavior, for example. Now, don't get bring up confused with grow up. A child grows up. He becomes bigger and older and taller. But the parents or the adults bring up the child. They care for and educate the child. Okay? Now, here's a totally different way to use bring up. That's a great idea. You should bring it up at tomorrow's meeting. What does bring up mean here? Oh, you guys are smart. Bring up means introduce a topic into a conversation or discussion. And you can bring up an idea, bring up a suggestion, or bring up something negative like bring up an objection or bring up a problem. It just means to introduce or start talking about that topic in a general conversation or discussion. So that's another way to use bring up. Number three, take out. He took his phone out of his pocket. What do you think take out means? Exactly. It means to remove something from inside a place. So you can take your phone out of your pocket, like you can see in the picture. When you get to school, you take your books out of your backpack. Um, when you buy a new product, you need to take the product out of the box, and so on. That's pretty self-explanatory. Now here's a slightly different way to use take out. I took out ten library books. What does take out mean in this case? It's similar, but it's not exactly the same. Okay, good. In this context, take out means borrow. It means you remove the books from the library, but you will need to give them back. And we only use take out in this case for taking books out of the library or taking books out from the library or taking a loan, that's money, out from the bank. You take the books or take the money out, but you will need to give it back later, okay? Now, meaning number three for take out. John is taking my sister out to dinner on Friday. What does take out mean here? Good job, a few people got it. Take out means to bring someone on a social encounter, and it may be romantic. For example, taking your girlfriend out to dinner or taking somebody out to see a movie. Or it may not be. You can also take a colleague out to lunch, or your parents can take you out to see a baseball game. And taking someone out usually means you invite them and usually that you also pay for them. So you pay for their dinner or pay for their movie ticket, okay? So to take someone out means to bring someone and to pay for their experience, their meal or ticket. Let's look at take up. Imagine you're moving into a new apartment and you look at the apartment and you say, there's no room for a bookcase because the couch takes up too much space. What does take up mean? Right. Take up means to fill or occupy time or space. So, for example, you can see in the picture, this is a really big couch and it takes up, it fills all the space so that there's not enough room for a bookcase. Again, you can use take up with space or time. For example, responding to email takes up a lot of my time. That's true, by the way. I get a lot of email from students. Okay, here's a different way to use take up. I've just taken up skiing. I've had two lessons so far. What does take up mean here? Take up means to start, to start a sport, activity, or hobby. Okay? That's also pretty easy to understand. 
Number five, back up. You should back up your files so that you won't lose them if your computer crashes. What do you think back up means? I see we have some computer experts in the classroom. Yes, back up means make a copy of computer data or information. It's to make an extra copy of that computer data, and you can make a backup on a server, you can make a backup on a hard drive or a CD or a USB drive. The important thing is to have an extra copy of the information. So if your computer crashes, if it breaks, or if you lose your computer, if it's stolen, you have an extra copy of your data. Okay, and we have two ways to use this word, back up two words is the verb, and back up one word is the noun, referring to the extra copy of the data. Now here's a different meaning. He crashed his car into a tree while backing up. What does backing up mean here? Right, to move backwards, to move the car in reverse. And we can use back up for cars. We can also use back up for people when you're walking and you take some steps backwards. And when you're walking, we can also use back away. We usually back away from danger. Like if you see an angry dog, you would back away from the dog uh, so that it doesn't bite you. Okay? A third way to use back up. My coworkers backed me up when I complained that the boss was giving us too much work. What does back up mean here? This one's a little more difficult. To back someone up means to give moral or emotional support for someone's position. So in this example sentence, I'm complaining about overwork and if my coworkers back me up, it means they agree with and support me in that opinion or in that position, okay? To back up, to back someone up is to give support to that person. Here's another way to use back up. There's a ton of traffic. The highway is backed up for miles. Have you ever experienced this? What does back up mean here? Back up means to accumulate and delay due to excess. So the most common ways we use back up with this meaning is when talking about roads. You can say the road is all backed up because there are so many cars that it's slow or stopped. Um, you can say your toilet is backed up. That means it's blocked and the water can't go through. That's a very bad situation. And you can also say that your schedule is backed up. For example, um, imagine that you have a store and your store gets a lot of orders around Christmas time and you get so many customers that you have delays in sending out the orders. So you would say, we're all backed up. I can't ship your order for another uh, two weeks, for example. So a road can be backed up, a toilet can be backed up, or a schedule can be backed up, okay? Blow up. The factory blew up due to a gas leak and three people were killed. What does blow up mean? Right, you got it, to explode, okay? This can be used for any type of explosion, um, bombs or accidents. Um, it can be used for big or small explosions. Now, a different way to use blow up. The CEO, that's the president, the president of a company, the CEO blew up when he found out that his mistake had lost the company a billion dollars. What does blow up mean in this context? It's similar, but it's more metaphorical. Blow up can mean to explode in anger. When someone gets angry very suddenly, very quickly, they lose control, they lose their temper. We say they blew up, okay? 
So that's not a literal explosion. It's an explosion of emotion, angry emotion. Number seven, give away. If you haven't worn a piece of clothing in more than a year, you should give it away. What do you think give away means? Good job. Give away means to give something to someone for free. Okay? Different from selling it, you give it for free. Like you can see in the picture, people donating their old clothing, giving it to other people for free. Here's another way to use give away. I don't want to give away the end of the movie. You'll have to see it for yourself. What do you think give away means in this sentence? In this case, give away means to reveal secret information. And we usually talk about giving away the end of books or giving away the end of a movie. You don't want to give away the end of a movie or a book to someone who hasn't seen it or read it yet because then you'll ruin the surprise for that person. And sometimes we also talk about giving away company secrets or strategies. Um, one example is that Coca-Cola definitely doesn't want to give away their recipe for Coke because then everybody would be able to produce it. So give away, another meaning for it is to reveal secret information. Number eight, work out. I need to lose weight, so I'm going to work out at least three times a week. What do you think work out means here? To exercise, that's right. Um, working out can mean any type of exercise. It can mean exercise you do with only your body, like yoga um, or any types of exercises. Or it can mean exercising with objects or with machines. So lifting weights or using an exercise machine. Working out can refer to running as well. Any type of exercise can be called working out, okay? Now, what about this sentence? There were a number of problems during the project, but everything worked out fine in the end. What's your best guess for what worked out means in this situation? It means it resolved. It had a positive outcome. And we usually use worked out in this way when there were some difficulties or challenges in the process. But in the end, everything was okay. We say everything worked out or we worked out the problems. We resolved the problems. Okay? So that's a different meaning for work out. Number nine, make up. I didn't know the answer to the question, so I just made something up. What does make up mean in this case? It means to invent, invent a story or invent some information that is not true. It's just coming from your imagination. Um, children often make up stories or make up imaginary friends. Um, one thing you don't want to do is make up information if you're a journalist. Um, that's not good. You need to report the facts and not make up, invent false facts. Okay, so make up means to invent something, usually a story or a piece of information. Now, how about this? After not speaking to each other for a month, my daughter and her best friend finally made up. What does that mean, they finally made up? If you make up with a person, it means you restore a good relationship after an argument or fight. So in this case, we have two girls who had an argument or a disagreement or a fight, and they didn't speak to each other for a month, but then eventually they made up. They became friends again, and they restored their good relationship. Okay, so when two people make up, it means 
they come back to having a good relationship after a disagreement or argument. Now, how about this? I bought my mother a nice gift to try to make up for missing her birthday party. What do you think "make up" means here? Wow, you guys are really good. To make up means to compensate in this situation. So I missed my mother's birthday party. My mother's probably sad or upset or angry, and so I buy her a nice gift to compensate for my mistake or my absence at her party. And there are two ways to use make up in this way. You can say make up for a mistake or make up for bad behavior, or you can say make it up to a person. So one sentence you'll hear. If your friend does something that makes you angry or upset,、um, they might say, "How can I make it up to you?" It means, "How can I compensate for my error? How can I, how can I do something good that will balance out the bad thing that I did? How can I make it up to you?" Okay, make up meaning to compensate. Now we also have the word makeup, one word which means cosmetics. That's、uh, lipstick and eyeshadow and other things that women usually, but also actors and actresses, put on their face to make them more beautiful. That's a noun, and that's one word: makeup, cosmetics. Okay. And our last phrasal verb, pick up, has many meanings. I picked up the toys that my kids left all over the floor. What does "picked up" mean here? Good. This is the easiest and simplest meaning. To pick up means to take something, usually with your hand, and bring it up from a surface. So here in the picture, you can see the toys all over the floor, and the kid's mother or father needs to pick up the toys, get them. Up off the floor and put them away in their proper places. Now, how about this? I'll be back in an hour. I need to pick up a few things at the store. It's not exactly the same meaning as the previous one. What does "pick up" mean here? Pick up means to buy. It's an informal or casual way to say. You're going to buy something. You would usually pick up、um, food at the grocery store. You can pick up something on your way home from work.、Uh, for example, you're driving home and you remember that you don't have any soap at home, so you stop at the convenience store to pick up some soap. We usually don't use "pick up" for major purchases, like you wouldn't pick up a diamond necklace or pick up a new car, because those are usually things you need to think about buying and research. So, "pick up" is a way to talk about casual or informal purchases. Here's another one. Sure, I can give you a ride. The concert starts at eight, so I'll pick you up around seven fifteen. What does "pick you up" mean? Pick someone up means to get someone in your car to take them to a place. So, if your friend doesn't have a car but they need to go somewhere, you can say, "I'll pick you up. I will get you in my car to take you somewhere." And the opposite of "pick up" or "pick someone up" is "drop the person off." So, for example, if your friend is returning from a trip, you can pick them up at the airport and then drop them off at their house. A fourth meaning for pick up: When we moved to Spain, my kids picked up Spanish within three months. How about picked up here? What does it mean? Right, it means to learn, and usually to learn quickly and casually, not in a formal classroom environment. So, in this example sentence, when I say my kids picked up Spanish, 
It means they learned it naturally from their friends, from TV,、um, from day-to-day -day life. Not that they were in a classroom. They just picked it up. They learned it naturally and easily. And finally, a fifth meaning for pick up. Sales are slow over the summer, but they usually pick up around September. What does pick up mean in this context? Take your best guess. Right, pick up means to increase or improve, often after a period of decrease or no change. So you can see from the little diagram that I have no real major change in sales, but then it starts to go up, and we say that sales pick up when they suddenly start to go up a little bit. Usually, not a big increase, but It's a change in the positive direction, and we usually use "pick up" in this way when talking about the economy, sales, or growth. Okay, so that's five different ways to use the phrasal verb "pick up." Well, you guys did great in this webinar, and I hope you've learned some new meanings for phrasal verbs. And if you want to continue learning phrasal verbs in context, specifically in the context of conversation, more conversational spoken English, you'll really enjoy the phrasal verbs in conversation course. This was one of my favorite courses to produce because you learn directly from dialogues, which makes it easier and more interesting. And the dialogues are full of the phrasal verbs that we use in everyday life all the time. So each lesson starts with a dialogue with lots of phrasal verbs, and then continues with an explanation of those phrasal verbs, including more examples and when to use and when not to use each phrasal verb. And the lessons in this course also include lots of practice exercises because I think it's really important not just to study, but also to use the new words that you're learning. So I included quizzes with the phrasal verbs to help you remember them, and also some writing exercises where you can practice. Writing sentences with the phrasal verbs, and you can even send them to me for correction. The course is thirty lessons with audio, video, and text. And when you register for it, you get permanent online access. There's no time limit. Okay, so there's thirty lessons, but you can take them any time, and you can also download all the lessons to your computer. Or to your smartphone or tablet to make it more convenient for you and to be able to study even if you don't have an internet connection. All right. So if you're interested in taking phrasal verbs in conversation, just click the button under this webinar and you'll get more information and registration for the phrasal verbs course. Well, I normally take questions at the end of the webinar, but unfortunately, we're just about out of time. So I'm going to respond to all of your questions by email. Okay? So if you have a question about the phrasal verbs you learned today, or about the phrasal verbs course, or about any other aspect of English, you can type your question in the box. Or you can email me directly. My email address is help at espressoenglish dot net, and I will respond to you by email within a couple of days. Okay, and I will also type up the notes from this webinar and send them out to you so that you can have the text、um, of today's webinar about phrasal verbs with multiple meanings. I hope you guys enjoyed today's class. It was great to have your participation. Thank you so much for coming, and I hope to see you in the phrasal verbs course and also in the next webinar. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye.